So you want to make a game in Unity? No problem. Just decide between hundreds of technologies you've never heard of and figure out which of them fits your needs best. In this video I want to help you create the Unity project as fast as possible without you needing to break your head over what render pipeline to use or whether or not using the new input system. I'm going to talk about the common decisions you need to make when creating a new project and how those decisions could change in the future. So let's talk about the first thing you can decide even before you're inside of the project, the render pipeline. When you create a new project Unity asks you which of the templates templates to choose from. For new developers, it could be very confusing to have three different templates when making a 3D game. The three options are the build-in render pipeline, the universal RP and the high definition RP. Basically the build-in render pipeline was the standard way since the scriptable RPs were introduced in 2019. It still supports all the rendering features you could possibly need and you can add post-processing with the package. The scriptable render pipelines didn't support all the features in the beginning, but now they do and Unity wants you to use them. They want to get rid of the build-in render pipeline but let you still use it for compatibility reasons. So for making a project in Unity, don't use the build-in renderer unless you have a very specific feature like camera stacking. But which of the two remaining pipelines should you use now? On the surface, URP has less features, but on the features it offers better performance than HDRP, so it's mostly used for mobile and standalone VR development. But URP can still look good, it's just lacking features like real-time ray tracing and volumetric lightning, just to name a few. So if you want to go for a more realistic art style, you probably want to go with HDRP. But you can look at the Unity Mate comparison between the three pipelines to see if they support the features you need. For 2D games, you can use the build and render pipeline if you don't need any lights, but if you want them, 2D lights are only available in Europe. This topic looks bright in the future and you hopefully don't need this comparison then. At Unite, they say that they will make a single pipeline called the Unified Renderer, which has the best of all worlds. They will kill the build and render pipeline, so Unity 6 will be the last version that supports it. The Unified Renderer will support all the features of URP and HDRP, but instead of choosing one of two pipelines that you can't change easily afterwards, you can decide per feature if you want to use it. After you probably decided for the universal render pipeline, the next decisions aren't as linear and obvious as the first one. At some point in development you need to get mouse, keyboard or controller input and there are two solutions for this, the new and the old input system. As for the names of the two you can probably guess which of them you should use. In summary, the new input system is harder to set up and basically needs more work up front but if you want a more versatile and configurable system which allows for easy key rebinding, local multiplayer and as many other advantages compared to the old input system. So for small game jam games I usually go for the old one because it's basically preset up and you don't really need to do much in code to get input working but for anything bigger than that it's worth the initial setup. I don't think that regarding the input system anything will change in the future but they both have the right to exist and hopefully neither of them gets removed. After that rather small decision we have another really big one. If you have worked a while in Unity, you're probably familiar with the standard game object workflow. But on that side, Unity has made a package that completely changes the way of working with the engine, the Entity Component System. In a nutshell, the Entity Component System is a new coding structure. Instead of writing mono behavior scripts and putting them on game objects, you make game objects that get mutated into entities with component scripts to bake the game object into an entity. The pre-existing mono behaviors can now be split up into two parts, the data and the logic. The data are the components we talked about earlier, only as struct with value types, and the systems go for each entity with specific components and execute logic on it, like modifying the transform. That system has many advantages for high amounts of entities. It's extremely performant, it separates data from logic, which is generally speaking a good coding practice, but it also has some disadvantages, like the barrier of entry. This is only for experienced developers, it's more complicated and you need to write way more boilerplate code than for money behaviors. Also some things like cameras can't be written in ECS because the camera has no counterpart component for in ECS. For those things that cannot be done in ECS you need to fall back to game objects. Another huge drawback in ECS is that you lose the object oriented programming aspect of C sharp which made it really easy to get started with programming and understand code in a more visual way. So you're essentially giving away the beautiful structure and coding patterns of object oriented programming and get better performing memory management in return. As you've probably guessed what system to use it's most times a mix of both. For things like the player and logic that most times exist only once I would not bother with the complicated structure of ECS and just use game object based approach. 
control. For things that exist in huge quantities like enemies, bullets, etc. You can try to write it in ECS, but it's not a must. You can write everything with game objects and your game can still be great. Unity also talked about the future of ECS and it sounds great. They want to make a unified transform that basically allows entities and game objects to use the same transform, which allows them to use ECS in the background of game objects. So no matter how you write your game, ECS will work in the background and will give you a performance boost without changing your whole game structure. Another technology people might confuse sometimes are the particle systems, which there are two of them, the standard Unity particle system and the VFX graph. The particle system calculates particles on the CPU, which is slower, but allows for easier interaction with the game world. The VFX graph, on the other hand, calculates the particles on the GPU, which is insanely fast and allows for beautiful scenes with millions of particles. They cannot interact with the world as easily as the particle system, but can look way better. Both of them are easy to understand and can be made with the drag and drop editor. For getting started in Unity, the particle system is easy because it has less features and is not based on math as much as the VFX graph. So both of them have their use case. You need to decide which of them to use based on what you want to achieve. Therefore, I don't think Unity will change anything about that besides making the two technologies better. Another big decision people need to make is their UI framework. Building user interfaces in Unity was done with UGUI most of the time. It was a way to build user interfaces directly on the game world based on mono behaviors and game objects, meaning that every button, dropdown, etc. was a game object with a button script on it that had a Unity event that fires when the button was pressed, which made it very easy to interact with code. This is suboptimal regarding styling, consistency and performance. It was not a great tool for artists and UI designers because they aren't familiar with the workflow in any way. That's why many companies have built their own UI solutions like Rive and Nova UI. They were great with the only drawback that they are third parties and are not made by Unity. But Unity also built their own UI framework. It's called UI Toolkit. It has a complete separation between the game world and the user interface. You can think of it like HTML and CSS but in Unity. They have a drag and drop tool so you don't even need to know how to code in a markup language. This approach is way better for consistent styling and separation between game and UI. But it's harder for beginners and it's a new tool to learn. So if you are familiar with UGI, you need to decide if it's worth learning another tool. So you can use whichever one you like. Both of them have proven themselves that they can build beautiful user interfaces and it comes down to personal preference if it's worth learning a new tool or stick to what you probably already know. If you have a separate UI designer on the team, they are probably familiar with such technologies, but the programmer needs to do a bit of extra work. In regards to the future, Unity is trying to upgrade UI toolkit that it supports things like WorldSpace UI and generally make the preferred way of programming user interfaces. But if you want, you can always use UGUI or a third party UI framework. They have no plans for killing UGUI besides for editors where UI toolkit is already the way to go. One of the most important things in a game is audio. As you probably guessed, there's not only one solution for that. When you've played a game, you've probably seen FMOD or WISE in the startup screen. Those are the two most famous audio solutions. There. Unity itself has an audio system, but it's a red a weak tool and it's not used in production. So if you are making a game where you want decent audio, you should use one of the two mentioned audio solutions. They support spatial and adaptive audio, meaning that the audio changes when certain events happen in the game and also have a better audio workflow than with Unity's built-in audio. It's made in a separate software and the triggers for events are implemented in Unity. Most indies use FMOD because the license is more indie friendly. But if you want to have a certain feature that only Wise supports, it's also an option. Futurewise, Unity won't build a tool as great as FMOD for example but they'll continue updating their existing audio solution. So the decision making will be the same. This part is only if you're making a multiplayer game and if you haven't decided on the right networking solution. There are so many options out there that choosing the right one isn't easy, but we can split them up into Unity made ones and third parties. Unity's solution is Netcode, which is available for game objects and entities. It's a rather new solution and it's not as robust and featureful as some of the third parties. There are so many available, we can't name all of them, but the most popular ones are arguably Mirror and Photon. There are more tutorials out there than for Netcode and they existed for longer, so they are more robust and have more features. They are easier to set up, but usually cost money. I would recommend using a solid third-party solution when you just want things to work out of the box, but if you want to have more control, you can choose Netcode. Future-wise, Unity will continue updating Netcode and maybe it will be the best choice out there in the future. Now I want to cover a few small decisions that can still be important at times. This one is important when working with 3D lights. The question often comes up to use forward or deferred rendering. The rule of thumb is to use forward rendering when you don't have many lights in the scene because it comes without a base cost and per light you add, it needs more performance. Deferred rendering, on the other hand, has a high base performance cost but you can add as many lights as you want and the performance merely changes. When making shaders, the only way to do that in Unity was to learn HLSL. This changed in 2019 when Unity introduced Shader Graph, a way to make custom shaders with a powerful drag and drop editor. 
It's enough for most things you build. If you have some specific needs or you need really powerful shaders, you can write them in HLSL. But if you want to learn it, it's not as difficult to write custom shaders and you can get used to it pretty fast. Last but not least, when building a project, Unity asks you if you want to use Mono or LL2 CPP. Most of the times you want to build it in Mono because the build time is faster. But on the final build that you publish, you can choose LL2 CPP for a faster runtime performance. This is my first video of this length, so let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. If you did, it would really make my day if you liked the video and if you want to see more of the content, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day.